Aaron Peet is the curator of the popular podcast, Bigger Than Me. Aaron was born and raised in Chilliwack, graduated from Sardis Secondary, studied at UFV and UBC. His is a story of perseverance, determination, and love that enabled him to overcome significant early life challenges to become a broadcasting change maker. Aaron, please. I'd like to talk to you about overcoming adversity and reaching your full potential. My mother was saved by a nurse at Kokolitsa Indian Hospital as a child. That nurse is in the middle of this photo and my mother to the left. I wouldn't be here today without Dorothy Kennett's decision. I have always felt connected to my grandmother. She was always in my corner when times were tough. Visiting her was my escape from a life of poverty. She was, and still is, my hero. My mother struggled with a disability. Her and I relied on social assistance, community resources, and good Samaritans when I was growing up. My mother took parenting courses at Family Place and did the very best she could to provide for us and to encourage me to move forward positively. We grew up in downtown Chilliwack during a tough period in the community. My cl close friend Jacob and I would visit the local subway during middle school, which looking back was a way we kept ourselves out of bad behavior. It was at this subway where it was robbed, I chased the person, and ended up having to go to court as a consequence. That was my first time taking a bold action. I learned this from my role models growing up. A few years later, there were plans to tear down a theater that my friends and I went to my whole life. Jacob and I started to try and save the Paramount. It was a sad day to see it torn down, but my first interaction with community leadership. At this time, I had teachers who told my mother that I might not graduate high school and that I had a personality disorder. The plan was to go to Chilliwack Secondary, but I switched in the hopes of having a better education without negative peer influence. I was grateful for this because the culture at Sardis was to go to university. I ended up attending UFV for criminology and criminal justice. During this time, I had professors who truly believed that I had a potential that was untapped. I have been to a few universities, but UFV will always have a special place in my heart because they encouraged me and said that I had more potential to live up to. Right after graduation, I called, emailed, tried to contact anyone at the Native Court Workers and Counseling Association. I had learned about the overrepresentation of Indigenous people and found this a way to tackle that issue while reconnecting with my culture. It was through this that I learned about Crown Council, judges, and lawyers. Through that role, I was encouraged to seriously consider law school. So I did. I started preparing for the law school exam at Starbucks. I wrote the exam and was accepted by Peter A. Allard School of Law, and I'm currently in my third year. I believe I proved the teachers wrong and my professors at UFE right about reaching my potential. But I missed my partner. I was living on campus, and I decided that I would rather commute from Vancouver from going to Chilliwack to Vancouver. And during that time, I listened to a lot of podcasts by neuroscientists, evolutionary biologists, and engineers, and it inspired me to start my own podcast. One of my favorite rappers, Sean Anderson, had a song called Bigger Than Me. It discussed his time and realizing that the music was bigger than himself and it wasn't about the money and fame. I listened to this song on repeat because it reminded me of my grandmother and her action of doing something bigger than herself and the influence and impact it had. With the logo, I did my best to tie in the Paramount Theater, which Jacob and I tried to save, the neon lights, and the album cover from Sean Anderson's song, Bigger Than Me, in the hopes that this would tie in my life experience into a project that was bigger than myself. I decided to focus on interviewing individuals I identified as role models because I know there are many people out there with negative family supports, antisocial peers, and who don't have someone to talk to or listen to. So I decided to make three hour long interviews where we hear about the family, their community, and their career. But I lost my grandmother this year, and this tore me apart. I thought about the legacy that she had left and realized that was one of the greatest gifts she could leave me. 
through the Bigger Than Me podcast, I decided to carry on her legacy and try and build upon it, upon my, my family and my supports. I've had the opportunity to interview great leaders like Chief David Jimmy, who leads many organizations and has worked hard to build bridges in our community and not to look towards divisiveness. I've gained a lot from interviewing individuals like David and hopefully my listeners have as well. It was an honor to interview Brian Minter for a few reasons. We talked about how he lost his mother to cancer and it had a lot of similarities with my grandmother. We talked about his community and how he tries to impact his community in a positive way. And that made me think of my grandmother, her legacy, and how to move forward in a better direction. I've also had the pleasure of interviewing individuals like Inez. Inez Louie is now the health and wellness director for Shiam First Nation. She talked about the challenges of attending the University of British Columbia and being apart from her family. And again, this resonated with me because these were similar challenges that I was facing. I've also had the pleasure of interviewing neuroscientist Ryan Darcy, who is based out of Surrey. He lost his mother at a young age to alcohol use. Despite this, he has helped innovate his field and improved the quality of care individuals with brain cancer receive and has put Canada on the world stage for some of his research, including Project Iron Soldier. I have faced a lot of adversity and challenges growing up and I didn't know what it meant to reach my full potential. But when I thought of this, I thought of a video I watched called Good by Jocko Willink, and he argues that we should look at adversity as an opportunity because it can set the example for others, and that is what I hope this podcast brings about. I hope this podcast can inspire others to face their challenges head on, find a supportive community, and to reach their full potential. Through this, I sincerely believe that we can all be catalysts for change in a meaningful way in our communities. Mm-hmm.